Hey everyone, Dana here from Stimulated Boredom, and this video is a follow-up to my first video review of the Google Nexus 10, so consider this part two of my original review, uh, since I'll be responding to many of the questions or requests that a lot of you left in the comments section of the first video, uh, where I neglected to cover gaming on the Nexus 10, oops, uh, Google Now, and a few other features. My bad, okay? Uh, so I plan to make that up to all of you in the second video. Now, if you haven't already seen part one, I'll add the link in the description of this video, or you can simply click the link that I'll embed in this video once it pops up. Now, in that first video, I took you through a physical tour of the device and the specs, along with showcasing everything from the beautiful high-resolution screen uh, to how movies, music, books, magazines, comic books, etc., looked on the device, along with multiple account support, uh, the pull-down notifications, and the widgets. So if you're interested in seeing all of that, uh, be sure to check out the first video review, which is roughly 30 minutes long uh, and really gives you a sense of the Nexus 10. Now, as I mentioned previously in this video, I'll be responding to viewer uh, questions and requests that cover gaming, Google Now, note-taking, and a few other uh, features. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, on the gaming side, I went ahead and actually... Um, updated it and personalized it. In the last video, I just threw a bunch of widgets on there. Now, uh, a little bit more kind of my style, added some nice widgets as it relates, um, you know, to weather and things like that, uh, which a lot of you guys will appreciate because I know that in a lot of forums, people are always posting their screens and what did you do and all of that stuff. Obviously, in portrait notification, excuse me, in portrait mode, you're going to have, obviously, a very similar experience. So I kept my bookmarks on there, kept my emails uh, for multiple accounts, which uh, Gmail actually does have a unified account. So if you have multiple accounts, obviously they're based in Gmail, whether for a website or for personal use, you can actually unify all of that into one inbox that allows you to check those different accounts, which is pretty nice. And then I went ahead, obviously, my different app drawers for social, check-in, uh, Google products, you know, messaging, etc. And then just a simple calendar on there. But I'll go ahead and put it back in landscape mode, uh, probably for the remainder of this video. So the first thing a lot of people jumped on me about, which I actually felt very bad because I entirely forgot to cover this, but gaming on the Nexus 10. Now, obviously, with two gigabytes of RAM, with a fantastic dual-core processor, with a very fast and snappy processor, and the beautiful screen, obviously, a lot of people are going to be interested in how gaming looks. Uh, so let me hit, go ahead and take you through some of that. Now, for games, I'll start off with, um, let's say, Angry Birds Star Wars, uh, since I've actually gotten kind of tired of Angry Birds, but the moment they brought Star Wars into it, well, that's a, uh, that's a different story. Now, this is going to be more casual gaming, and then I'll get into more graphic-intensive gaming uh, in a moment here. Okay, we can skip all of that. Okay, now just a quick note as it relates to the volume. Uh, as I mentioned in my previous video, I have a microphone that's actually pointed at me. It is not pointed at the device. Uh, so therefore, uh, even though the volume is up on the speakers, my microphone is not set up to pick up sound from behind it. So that's why you're probably not going to hear as loud of sound coming out of it. Okay, so a little Star Wars action. What is all this? Go away. Here we go. <clears throat> You see, it's very smooth. Owned. <laughs> anyway, so that's going to be more casual games. Um, that's, of course, is Angry Birds. I'll go ahead and close it out so it's not running in the background. And I have other games on here, too. Let's say, for instance, um, there's Guns and Glory. I've got Cogs. I can pull that up on here. Uh, and again, I'm showcasing kind of more casual games first, and then I'll get into more graphics-intensive games uh, in just a little bit. Okay. So you can see everything looks very nice. Does this, this one turn? There's no lagginess or anything along those lines. which makes for a very nice experience. 
Now, as I mentioned previously, I normally don't game a ton on my tablets. I have a, a, a pimped out PC that I use for PC gaming. Um, and I also have um, pretty much every console that you can think of. So most of my gaming is done on consoles or PCs. Uh, but there are a lot of games here that I do enjoy uh, that can be played on a tablet. So I'm just giving you guys different examples of just how everything looks. Uh, that's requiring me to download a bunch of files, so I won't make you guys wait for that. Uh, let's see here. We can do Guns and Glory World War II. Yes, it's a load screen. That's got to be fun. Sir, yes, sir. Anyway, so just giving you guys different examples. That one actually does not look like it's optimized yet for the high res uh, screen, so that might not be the best example. Uh, what other games can I do? Let's go ahead and do Dead Trigger, a more graphic intensive game. Zombies. Oh, wait. How do I turn? I haven't played this one before, actually. Nope, that's reload. Alright, so so far I kind of suck. But you see that there's no lagginess. Why can't I turn? In your face! <clears throat> really it's important to shoot zombies in the face but again just showing you an example this is a more graphic intensive uh, game I don't know how to turn so I kind of suck at zombie killing <clears throat> okay so that gives you an example in terms of gaming on the device. Uh, Dead Trigger, obviously, a little bit more in terms of processing than, of course, the more casual games. Um, a game like Plague I can bring up, <clears throat> which is actually kind of a morbid game, but strangely addicting that you have to basically create uh, a virus that spreads throughout the world. And uh, here, I'll just do normal, bacteria. Anyway, <clears throat> I forgot I got to set all this stuff up because it's not on my phone like it was before. Um, what's another one? Anyway, that should pretty much give you a pretty good idea uh, overall about the gaming uh, on the device itself. And so the next thing that I wanted to kind of go into was I had a couple requests for how Spotify uh, worked on it. And I had actually covered uh, Google Play. Um, or Google Music on the first review video. Uh, I actually don't use Google Play that much. I think it's actually quite nice, or Google Music, excuse me, uh, which is quite nice because it has, <clears throat> you know, this nice little carousel. But most of my music is either through Spotify, I use Amazon MP3. So to give you guys an example for those who specifically asked about Spotify, which is actually the service that I use more often myself, I wanted to show you how that looked. Now, it does not appear that they have it set up yet, um, specifically tablet. Uh, only reason why I say that is because the icon still doesn't look as high res as other ones that were obviously uh, updated for. Um, I don't have to log in again, do I? Okay, you guys can't see for a second. Just play. There we go. The girl from Ipanema. Okay, so let's say, for example,. I go into um, music, and of course it works in landscape mode as well, I believe. No, it just works in uh, portrait, it looks like. Okay, so for instance, if I go into, <clears throat> I don't know, 
pick something. Find that out. Silver Sun pickups. I'll bring this around to the microphone. So you can see it works perfectly fine. The streaming is very quick. Uh, I'm not sure if you can kind of see how clean uh, the text looks on there for the different playlists. Bring it a little closer to the microphone. Anybody throw up from that? You're welcome. Okay, so that was Spotify. I actually had a lot of questions about Spotify, so I'm glad so many people are using that service because I swear by it. I have it on my cell phone uh, as well. Now, the next thing that I wanted to cover um, was relating to the App Store. A lot of people asked about apps, and um, one of the things that's probably a big complaint that I have, and I'm sure it's going to be rectified in the future, so I'm not really all that concerned about it, is the fact that the App Store is not quite unified like it is in the Apple App Store. What I mean by that is if you buy an app for the iPad uh, in the Apple App Store, they'll usually indicate through just one version of that app, whether there's a tablet version of it, there's the iPad version, there's the mobile version, it's very easy to kind of search. Uh, unfortunately, in the Google Play Store, it doesn't seem to be that way. Uh, in fact, after I had set up the device and I went ahead and um, had to download all of my apps, I realized that um, the versions that I had downloaded to the uh, Nexus 10 were the mo mobile, mobile version, excuse me, the cell phone versions. And um, after looking in the Google Play Store, I found that there's like a tablet version of particular ones. And unfortunately, it's not kind of easy to find. I had to actually just go through the different categories. Uh, I also had to go uh, and just search like four tablets in the search function for things that come up. So for instance, uh, and again, you can do the four tablets. So like USA Today for tablet, um, and then the News Republic for tablet, and there was one for like Fandango for tablets, Appy Geek for tablets, CNN for tablets, and unfortunately it's not very unified. So I already had like the mobile version on um, the device from my phone, and unfortunately there wasn't anything that came up like a notification that says there is a tablet version for this app for a more optimized viewing experience etc so that would be a complaint that I would have that I'm sure they're gonna fix now that they've come out with this device and the Nexus 7 uh, but it does make it a bit convoluted uh, in terms of searching for stuff because then you've got to go find your favorite apps and then you got to go search it by developer and see if they have a tablet version of it and it'd be a lot easier if Google Play kind of handled that for you and lets you know I see that you are you know, on a tablet device, and so here is a tablet version uh, that you can use. But beyond that, everything else um, works great. Like I said, all the great widgets uh, that you can pull up. For those who had asked me about widgets, you would simply go into your app drawer, go into the widget section, and then from here you'd see all these different widgets that you can pull onto your screen, resize them, change the colors, um, what tapping the widget uh, does. Does it take you to a weather page? Does it is a shortcut for a website? Things like that. Uh, and then obviously adding a widget is just simply long pressing and then adding it to the screen uh, where you want to add it, which that one's not going to fit because I already have a lot of that taken up. Um, so that's kind of handy. And then beyond that, um, the other thing that I wanted to cover before I close out is a lot of people um, reminded me, in fact I realized after I finished, was that I did not cover Google Now. Now for those who don't know, Google Now is very similar to like Siri on the iPhone. Personally, I'm not a big fan of Siri. I think after the initial novelty of having your phone talk to you um, wears off, which is about maybe 30 minutes into it, the people ask you know stupid questions and then eventually get kind of tired of it. Beyond that, it's not really a functional app as far as I'm concerned. Whereas Google Now, what it does is it sends the information to you. You don't have to necessarily ask for it. Now, what I mean by that is if I click on the Google Now, now I don't have it really set up for like my house or anything like that. Oop, it is actually stop. <laughs> What's going to do a search of what I just did a moment ago. But I didn't want it to do that. 
I'll close that out to see if the cards come up. You know, so for instance, you know, it'll come up with like a weather app and bring you information relating to the weather. Um, but depending upon where you are, uh, it's location based. So it starts to learn your behaviors. If you're logged into Chrome as you're using it, let me go back to the cards. I'm all over the place here, excuse me. You know, show more cards. And you can personalize this with different, like here it's already bringing up restaurants that are near my house. Um, so I can pull it up if I want more information on the Tijuana Flats that is near me with reviews, um, a way to contact them, driving directions, the hours that it's open, etc. Or uh, if it's something I'm not interested, I can just simply swipe it away. But as you are searching within the tablet on your phone, that's one of the things that I love about um, Jelly Bean and Android and Google and all that is on my phone, on my computer, as long as I'm logged in when I'm using Chrome, all of those searches are unified across all of my devices. So if I searched for um, the weather on my laptop, when I pull up my phone, it shows that as a recent search. And same thing if I pull up um, my Nexus 10, it'll do the same thing. So I like how everything is very unified. You can also save directions for offline viewing. Uh, since this is a Wi-Fi only version, it's a 32 gigabyte uh, Nexus 10. Uh, but the other thing too is doing searches. So what ends up happening is if I've searched for, let's say, the Silver Sun pickups or Vampire Weekend, let me be bands that I'm interested in, Google now will actually start telling me if I'm in an area where there's a concert that's going on or something like that. I don't have to actually ask it um, to tell me information about particular bands or restaurants or anything like that. If I've shown interest in restaurants, then as I'm in an area where uh, a good restaurant that has a really good rating comes up, Google Now will just pop up these cards that I can actually flip through. Like right now, it's telling me I have 54 minutes uh, to work because it learned. I did not have to tell it. It learned that, okay, every morning I seem to go from my house to this other place, and I'm there for about 8 to 12 or 14 hours, and then I come home. So What's great is it also learns that I tend to leave the office, let's say, around 6 p.m. And so before 6 p.m., this card pops up and starts telling me um, how long my commute is, whether or not there's traffic, things like that. Uh, if I need to navigate someplace, I just simply hit navigate and it'll bring it up. Um, so that's really, really handy because it's actually providing information to you without you having to hit a button and ask it questions. It, it starts to learn what you're interested in. And, um, and we'll provide these cards that pop up. If you want to ask about your favorite sports team, it'll give you the score, you know, things like that. So a couple of things I'll do. <clears throat> I'll do a couple of tests here. What is the weather in Washington, D.C.? It's 52 degrees and overcast in Washington. Um, show me images of the Eiffel Tower. And you have like an image search that comes up very, very quickly. What is Google's stock price right now? Google is currently trading at 667 US dollars and 20 cents. Oh, better buy. Um, remind me to shoot my video review in one hour. Setting alarm. Uh, what else can I do? Where is the nearest Best Buy? And it brings up the information for where I'm at. Navigate me to the nearest Best Buy. Getting directions. And then you have your turn by turn directions that'll pop up. <clears throat> this is one of my favorite things about the device, so I'm going to go ahead and keep giving examples of things. I'll close out some of this stuff so we don't have a bunch of gunk running in the background. Send a text message to Shannon. Love you, babe. Oh, you know what? I didn't set up messaging on this. <laughs> my bad. Uh, let's see here. What's another one that I can do? Um, listen to the Silver Sun pickups. Let's use, I'll go ahead and use play music. But it did ask me if I wanted to use Spotify, if I wanted to use any of my other music apps.
Um, anyway, all kinds of different things that you can do. Um, what was the score of the Dolphins game? The Dolphins lost to the Bills 19 to 14. <laughs> Funny thing is, I'm actually more of a Bills fan because my family's from Buffalo <laughs> on the Italian side. So anyway, not that you care or needed to know that. What else can you do? Um, what time is it in Beijing? The time in Beijing, China, is 2.03 a.m. Uh, you can do, let's say, for instance, um, what is the meaning of life? Or what is it? I think you have to ask it a, a certain way or something like that. Um, what is the meaning of life, the universe, and everything? The answer to life, the universe, and everything is... 42. 42. <laughs> uh, very fond of the people who know that reference. Uh, let's see here. What else can you do? Um, translate to Spanish. Uh, that brings up Google Translate, but if I were actually uh, to say something like translate the Spanish and then say a, a term, I believe it comes up. Also, if you use Google Goggles, you can take a picture of, let's say, a menu or a poster or something like that in another language, and it'll translate it for you on the device, which I think is pretty cool. Who are the cast of the Big Bang Theory? It kind of gives you a breakdown. Sometimes it'll actually come up and, and tell you the names. Depends upon how the question is asked. Um, I'll just do a couple more here just to give you guys an idea. Um, how old is Stephen Hawking? Stephen Hawking is 70 years old. Um, where did Natalie Portman go to college? Natalie Portman education include Harvard University, Syosset High School, Anyway, so you get an idea of Google now, which is actually one of my favorite um, parts of um, Jelly Bean and, and the Nexus 10 and on my um, uh, my Nexus phone that I have uh, because it comes in handy. It's actually something that's practical in terms of what I'm looking for. I like that it'll pop up notes telling me that there's something interesting going on. There's a concert. Um, you know, if I've searched for Louis C.K., who's one of my favorite comedians, it'll tell me that there's a show coming up and where it's going to be located. So there's lots of interesting things uh, like that you can go to. Now, the other things that I uh, wanted to mention, there isn't too much more. A few people asked about settings. Uh, as I mentioned before, obviously, you've got your pull downs. You can actually pull up more information uh, by using two fingers and, uh, and being able to kind of see. You can actually share. Um, you know, this is for our breaking news uh, relating to banks and so forth like that. Uh, obviously, you can swipe away to close out stuff that you're not interested in reading right now, or you can simply pull down and get kind of a preview of what that email is going to be. And then on the other side over here, you do have like your settings. I mentioned before, uh, it does support multiple accounts. So right now it just has me. But if I were to add my girlfriend, she could have her own wallpaper, her own settings, her own apps, all of that stuff. It'll save her progress in movies that she's watching and apps that she's um, um, messing with or games that she's playing. And then if I log into my account, all of my settings will be retained. So it's kind of nice in terms of sharing and so forth like that. But if people had also asked about other uh, settings, if we go to portrait mode, make it easier to hold here. Uh, obviously, you have your Wi-Fi data usage. You can go to apps, see what's running. Uh, a few things in here, let's say, for instance, running, if you want to take a look at um, how much RAM you have left or if you want to force close something. So let's say that's taking up a little bit of memory. Android, obviously, is really great at managing memory in the background, uh, but you can certainly also swipe things closed by doing that, and it'll run it in the background. But there are other settings um, that you can go to. There we go. Uh, obviously, display, storage. Now, this is a 32 gigabyte. Uh, even with the stuff that I've added on it, it barely puts a dent in the memory. I'm not really too concerned about the lack of SD card. Uh, the reason for that is so much stuff nowadays is uh, cloud-based. So, therefore, if I download a game uh, on the, uh, the Nexus 10, my girlfriend's playing it, she beats it, I just simply download it because if she ever wants to play it again in the future, it can be easily reinstalled. Uh, just by going into the Google Play Store. Same thing with side-loading movies. Uh, usually we buy a lot of Blu-rays with digital copies, and so we'll activate it uh, and put it onto the, the tablet if I'm traveling for work. And then I come back and I pull off you know, the Avengers off of my uh, tablet because I can always sideload it again. So memory hasn't really been an issue. I buy all of my music through Amazon MP3. That gets saved to the cloud as well, so there's no real need to download it physically to the device unless I'm going to be traveling, but then I can also take it off of the device. So 32 gigabytes has been more than enough 
uh, in terms of what I've uh, needed, so I don't really see a need for any additional uh, expansion. I know I mentioned in the previous review that obviously you do have the ability to resize your widgets depending upon other things that you're going to be adding. Uh, a few people asked me about how I created my app folders. Like I said before, I've got everything from like messaging, miscellaneous, you know, different cameras, uh, geek stuff like my comics and things like that, uh, different games that I have on the device. You have your entire app drawer here. But to give you an example of how that works, let's say, for instance, I'll just use an open screen here. So let's say I'm going to do um, gaming. So I take Angry Birds, Star Wars, and there it is on the screen. Now, if I want to create a folder, I would simply go find another game, Dead Trigger, and I would stack it on top of Angry Birds, and now it creates a folder. Now, from that point, when you open it up, it says Unnamed Folder, then I can just tap there, type in Games, and now I've named the folder, and now I have a nice organization, I don't know if you guys can see that, where it says Games, and then I can just simply keep adding more stuff to that. So if I'm going through Doodle Jump, which I think was like a free one that I had before, I just simply put on top, boom, and then you've got you know your app drawers there. So I can get rid of that because I already have that saved someplace else. Um, putting on widgets, there's obviously different widgets that you can do. Uh, so let's say, for example, I want to use, let's see, we'll just use this widget here. So I add it, and then it starts asking me uh, information about changing the color. Now this is from HD Widget, so it's not something that's built into the device. You actually have to go get this from the store. But you can determine how you want things to behave. How do you want the clock to look? More digital, things like that. Um, if you want to have, you know, for the big clock with the transparency that's going to be on there. Let's say we pick something like a different color. Uh, you can pick a different clock color, things like that. Anyway, so when you're done, say I hit save, now it takes up my entire screen or if I want to have other options, which apparently I did not, there we go, I can resize it if I want it a little bit smaller, if I want it longer, if I want it to be bigger, which obviously I have that calendar in the way, uh, but you have that option to do kind of the resizing. So that's really handy. And what I had done here is, you know, for my different widgets for Wi-Fi and uh, airplane mode, um, I like to have a certain degree of symmetry when it comes to my apps and how my tablets look. So here in portrait mode, see it still retains that same kind of orientation. Um, but for instance, like even my settings tab, you know, it looked too small when I had it at the normal size. So I just went ahead and resized it so that it goes where I want it. Or if I want to move anything else around, I can certainly do that. So, but anyway, so that kind of gives you uh, a breakdown. Uh, now, I obviously already covered books and I covered, um, you know, movies and television on the Nexus 10. So hopefully that's pretty much uh, most of what you guys were looking for. I really do appreciate the people who left. Let's uh, see, there's a little, in the, in the first video, I was like, ooh, it's very intriguing. There was nothing here before. But because I set an alarm for an hour uh, to remind me to shoot my, my uh, review video, it now pops up there. And now I can go into the alarm and make an adjustment uh, to it and everything like that. So that was pretty much, you know, I think I covered everything you guys asked. I appreciate those who reminded me of some of the stuff that I forgot to cover and who also just had other requests. Oh, wait, you know what? There was one other thing. Uh, somebody had requested um, that I address uh, note-taking on the device. Now, obviously, you've got Evernote and things like that. I'll just go ahead and do that. So you've got Evernote, which obviously is going to use the keyboard, but there are people who've asked about like stylus and actually using like an S Pen or something. Like that. Now I don't have an S Pen. Uh, I do have a stylus. It's kind of like your basic stylus. I don't know if you guys can see that clearly. Uh, it does not have like a pointed edge. It has more of that ball, so it's probably not going to be as precise. So I just want to make sure people know that before I give an example of the note taking. Uh, but in here, I'm using Papyrus um, Beta, which was suggested from uh, somebody who had a question. So if I go to New Note, I don't think I actually touched it. There we go. Now, obviously, you can just write, Hello, smiley face. Fill in your eyeballs a little bit. So you've got that. Or if you wanted to, I think that's the right setting. As you can see, I have not used this a bunch. How do I go back? This goes back to everything. Now, if I'm using, 
the stylus. Now I'm trying to hold this so that you can uh, see it, but also so that I can write on it. This is probably not going to help here. Hello, my name is Dana, which actually looks like shit. And you can go to www.stimulated boredom. Wow. I can't write. <laughs> That's awful. Uh, now, again, I'm sensing that it's because of the stylus I'm using. If you can see, it is not a pointed edge. It's like a stylus for more broad strokes, so I am not giving a very good example. If I were writing with my hand, probably have a little bit more luck, you know, high. But note-taking does work. Now, somebody pointed out, um, you know, for I think the Galaxy 10.1, that actually comes with a Wacom uh, digitized um, either part of the screen or something in the software. I'm not familiar with it, uh, but it does allow for more precise note-taking. Now, if I had like the, the S Pen, which comes uh, with that, or that you can get with, um, I think, the uh, the Galaxy um, 10.1 uh, tablet, that it does allow for significantly more precise note-taking and everything like that. But I did want to show that it does work. And again, keep in mind that I have kind of like a, a fluffy, almost like the, the tip of a Q-tip, um, so it is not precise um, at all. But for those who asked about note-taking, um, there has not been much of a problem. I wish I had an S Pen, but I do not, and I apologize for that. So beyond that, I think I pretty much covered everything. We went through gaming, went through Google Now, uh, Spotify, which a lot of people had questions about, um, going into some of the settings. Um, beyond that, I think I've covered everything. Uh, so if you have any additional questions, certainly feel free to include those questions uh, either in the comments section of either of the videos. Again, this is part two of my video review for um, the Nexus 10. Or you can email me directly at Dana, D-A-N-A, -A, at stimulatedboredom.com. And uh, I may have to do another video on top of that. But as you can see, uh, go ahead and check out the first video where I kind of talk about the snappiness and all the different features uh, of the tablet. In this video, I'm covering a few things that I neglected to cover in the first review. And hopefully, I have sufficiently address them to prevent you from burning down my house. So uh, thanks for watching the video. I uh, appreciate anybody who uh, shares it or likes it. And let me know if there's anything else that you'd like me to do with my new precious. I love it so much. Bye-bye. Psych. <laughs> One other thing that people asked me about was using uh, Google Earth, actually, which is a very nice experience on here. So I thought I'd kind of amend the video real quick to show you that. Okay, so for instance, let's say we'll do the White House. Oop, I did not use the swipe very well. White House. Go. And now, of course, you can zoom in. You can also tilt, so you can get a closer view. Hopefully the government is not seeing that I have searched for the White House and the Echelon system is now tracking me. Uh, but you do get into like the 3D, see how that comes up? See if we can get that a little closer. I'll try to zoom in even more. You see how you have the trees, the fountain, in a three-dimensional version of it. Again, you can slide and then I think there's street view I'm trying to remember how to do that though so you can see how Google Earth works that just brings up local landmarks we'll go ahead oh wait you know that's a video gives you a little tour I don't know if there's sound though no just kind of zooms you in So that's pretty sweet. And it looks like it's actually a pre-rendered video when you're looking at particular landmarks. All right, so we're done with that. How do I stop you? Boop. And then, is there street view? 
All right, the last thing I'll pull up, let's do the Empire State Building. Now there you'll see a little bit of um, kind of stutter. There's actually the camera. So you got the Empire State Building, which actually does move into a three-dimensional model as well. Looks like it's actually processing some of that as it brings me into a three-dimensional version of downtown Manhattan. So you can see by moving your fingers up and down that you can tilt by obviously pinching. You can zoom in. There's different things um, like a Wikipedia entry. I know there's street view, and here you can clearly see like cabs in the street. So that's kind of cool. More of a toy. Most people are going to use like Google Maps and everything like that to pull up information, uh, but Google Earth is a nice experience uh, on the tablet. You know, go ahead and zoom back out. And again, three dimensional model, tilt, so you can see all the buildings. Uh, but anyway, so that concludes uh, this part two video review of the Google Nexus 10. Thanks for watching everybody.